Hi, welcome to the MadCenter.com. In this video, we are going to work through a further mechanics problem. Uh, this is taken from the specimen paper uh, 2020, uh, further maths paper 3. Again, okay? further maths paper 3, CIE, yeah? 9231, that's the subject code, yeah? CIE, 9231, and this is paper 3, specimen paper, you can... Uh, uh, view this paper on the website. Um, the full solution to this, I have worked it out and it will be uh, given to you as a link to this video. Uh, please give this video a like, share as much as you can, uh, follow me on Facebook and YouTube. For details on the courses that we offer online, uh, visit the madsetter.com, uh, the further maths courses, pure maths, mechanics, statistics and so on. Okay, let's start. Look, the question itself, uh, I don't want to waste time reading it. You go ahead and read it on your own. I just want to talk about gen the general ideas. First off, this question uh, is uh, uh, involves a mechan uh, what do you call it? Involves projectiles. So, in the first part, in question, uh, I think it's question number six, uh, part A, they ask you to show that the equation of the trajectory, okay, the trajectory is something, yeah, x and alpha minus gx equal to u squared second squared alpha. Okay, uh, so we need to do a little bit of derivation, yeah? So first we will look at uh, this picture here. I've drawn the essentials. Uh, we let fly an object at a certain speed u at an angle of alpha to the horizontal. And um, they tell you that at time t, the horizontal displacement is x, okay? At time t, the horizontal displacement is x, and the vertical displacement is y. These things you can read in the question, yeah? And um, uh, g, of course, you know, is 10. What else? That's it. That's all you need, yeah? And they tell you that the uh, there is an origin uh, O, okay? So let's start slowly. We are going to consider horizontal motion first, okay? Horizontal motion. Let me write it here. I will uh, erase it when I don't need it. Horizontal motion. We can write uh, before that, right? Very quickly. We have uh, u cos alpha and u sin alpha, yeah? The vertical and horizontal components. So for horizontal motion, let me underline that, we have uh, u cos alpha times t equals to what? x, okay? Equation number one. Then we will look at vertical motion, okay? Vertical motion. Vertical motion, we will use, you know, the constant acceleration formulas because the uh, only resistance we are going against here is uh, resistance due to gravity. So we're only talking about G here, yeah? uh, moving freely under gravity. So we will use, remember one of those formulas, S equal to UT plus what? Half AT squared. We'll modify this and now write it as Y equals to U sine alpha T uh, minus half G T squared. Yeah? Uh, because we are looking at A equals to minus G. So this becomes minus half gt squared. Done. So what's left? Well, what's left is just we need to, well, let me just call this equation 2. Okay, let me call that equation 2. And so I need to plug equation 1 into equation 2 and voila, you have the answer. Yeah. So we have got uh, y equals to u sine alpha. What is t? t will be x over u cos alpha. Yeah. Minus half g, we have got x over u cos alpha and we have squared. Let's just check everything is coming out correctly. So y equals to x, the u go, uh, the u cancels, the u goes off. So I have x tangent alpha, good. And then I have got half g and then I have x squared over u squared. I have 1 over cos squared alpha. Perfect, yeah. g x squared over 2 u squared. 1 over cos squared is second squared and we are done. So the equation of the trajectory will be y equal to x tangent alpha minus gx squared over 2 squared second squared alpha. Those of us who teach it regularly, we know that by heart. Yeah. So uh, this is the way to prove it. And uh, now let's get to the second part. Okay. Let's get to the second part. So uh, the second part, I've written, uh, written a little bit more for the second part. Uh, the greatest height is h. So I've indicated that here. Before we do anything else, right, the greatest height uh, on this trajectory is h, they give it to us, yeah, they give it to us. So we can use uh, v squared equals to u squared plus 2as, okay. 
I don't memorize any of those formulas. I always start with these formulas. Yeah? V squared equal to U squared plus 2AS. I'm using vertical motion. Okay, vertical motion. At the point of uh, the greatest height, yeah? at the point of the greatest height of the trajectory, you know that your vertical component is zero. So I have zero equals to U sine alpha O T squared minus 2G H. Right? Okay? So from here, we have got H will be equals to U squared sine squared alpha over 2G. Okay? I'll repeat. Uh, this U here is your vertical component. So it should be U sine alpha, right? And then I have G, uh, A is minus G. So I've got minus 2G H. And so H is U squared sine squared alpha over 2G. I'm going to use this in a minute. Uh, so let's keep it there. They tell us that when P is at a height, when P is at a height 3 over 4 H, it has traveled a horizontal distance D. Read the question on the exam paper, on the specimen paper. Uh, my writing here uh, leaves much to desire. Okay, it has traveled a horizontal distance D, and they give me tangent alpha as 2. You ask to find the two possible values of D in terms of H. So, must be a bit gentle about this, yeah? So, they gave me tangent alpha is 2. Let me also write tangent alpha is 2. Alpha is here, 2 is here, 1 is here, and I have. Okay, looks good. Tangent alpha is 2. So, my hypotenuse is 4 plus 1 square root of 5. Great. So, I've drawn the picture here for you. This is, of course, not in the exam paper. Okay, this is a picture that I've drawn. Uh, 3 quarter H, 3 quarter H at D1 and D2. They wanted to find the possible values of D in terms of H. Okay, great. Now that you know this, let's pick our way through this, yeah? H is U squared sine squared alpha over 2G. Uh, that will be U squared. What is sine squared alpha? Which will be 4 over 5, right? Sine alpha is 2 over, let me write it here. Sine alpha is 2 over square root of 5. So sine squared is 4 over 5, right? And then I have over, what is 2 times 10? 20, yeah? So that will be 4 over 100. That will be u squared over 4 over 100 will be 25. So therefore, therefore, my u squared is going to be 25. H. Let me quickly check that, yeah? 5 times 20 is 100, 4 over 100, 1 over 25, u squared over 25, great. u squared will be 25H. So I'm going to keep that here, okay? u squared is 25H. I'm going to keep that here, and I'm going to erase the board, yeah? Okay? I'm going to erase the board. So I now am going to use my equation of the trajectory, which we have found, uh, y equals to x tangent alpha minus gx squared over 2u squared secant squared alpha. Remember, x tangent alpha minus gx squared over 2u squared secant squared alpha. Great, yeah? Okay, so now they tell me that my vertical displacement is 3 over 4h, yeah? So let's do this slowly. So 3 over 4h, okay? What is, uh, we are looking at 3 of, we are trying to find x, yeah? We are trying to find x, except now it's called d. So what? Doesn't matter, yeah? So I'm going to maintain this as x, okay? What is tangent alpha? 2. We don't like to write x2. Let's go ahead and write it as 2x. Looks good. And then I have uh, g10. And then I have x squared over 2u squared. 2 times 25h. Where did I get that from? Here, yeah? And then I have second squared alpha. What is second alpha? Okay? Uh, cos alpha. Okay, let me write it here, is 1 over square root of 5, okay? So cos squared alpha will be 1 over 5. So this one is 5, okay? Now we need to do a little bit of cleanup. We are done, yeah? we are done. All we need to do is do some algebra here. Uh, 3 over 4h equals to 2x minus, what did we get here? This is 50 and this 50, oh good, this is? Uh, x squared over, let me just check everything is good, yeah, gx squared over 2u squared, great. So 10 times 5 is 50, 2 times 25 is 50, good. So this thing here is gone, okay. So x squared over h. Now we need to have, we're going to have a quadratic in x and we're going to solve, okay. So uh, let me multiply by 4 first, okay. So I have 3h 
equals to 8x minus uh, 4x squared over h. You must be careful about the algebra. Yeah? Multiply by 4, I have 3h equals to 8x minus 4x squared over h. Now I'm going to multiply by what? h. Yeah? Makes sense, right? So it will be 3h squared equals to 8xh minus 4x squared. Okay, just doing algebra, yeah? No more mechanics already. So now, I can erase all these things. I can erase all these things. Let me bring it up. Uh, let me quickly check 3h squared. And, okay, now I can write my quadratic as 4x squared uh, minus 8xh uh, plus 3h squared equals to 0. So you can, maybe you want to write a better quadratic if you like, you can write it like this, okay? Uh, minus uh, 8hx, doesn't matter, yeah? Okay, plus 3h squared equal to 0, just to make it more uh, quadratic like some of you may like it, yeah? Okay, now I need to do a bit of factorizing. I need to do a bit of factorizing. So let me do that, okay? I have got uh, 2x and I've got 2x. Let's see, I need a... Uh, 8 here, so I will I have a minus here, so I need a h. Let me just check that now. Minus 6, minus 2, okay? Minus 6 hx, minus 2 hx, great. Everything looks good. Therefore, my x equals to 3 over 2 h or h over 2. Therefore, my d has values h over 2. 3 over 2h and we are done. Thank you very much for watching. Please uh, give this video a like and share as much as you can. Uh, follow me on Facebook and YouTube for details on courses in further, further, further mathematics in CIE, whether it's pure mechanics and statistics, please visit my website. Thank you for watching. Oh,